Hello again, everybody. This is Sam Gilk with Bosch Rexroth. Today, I'm going to be looking at another app called DeviceBridge, which is now available on the ControlX store. The purpose of this application is to acquire data from a variety of input devices and protocols, transform and format the data on the ControlX core, and then transmit the formatted data set to some output device or service. In the example I'll be looking at today, I'm going to be using an MQTT broker uh, hosted on a Raspberry Pi as my input device. I'm going to uh, pull from some topic on that broker uh, into the Control X core, transform the data using some of the built-in Google Blockly functions as part of DeviceBridge. And then finally, I'll output uh, that transformed data set back to the MQTT broker um, under a new topic name. So let's take a look. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at device bridge configuration in the ControlX web interface. So after you've installed the device bridge app, you'll see on your left hand menu here, a uh, device bridge tab. When you expand this, you'll see a bunch of sub menus. Um, first, we'll start with the device sub menu, which is where you configure your input devices. So you can see here, I already have my MQTT broker set up, but I'll uh, edit this here so you can see how simple the configuration is. So all I have to do to establish communication with a MQTT broker is point to the IP address that the broker is running on, and then the port that the broker is running on. You can also set up SSL or certificates here if you'd like. And then once you have um, your input device configured, you can test the connection using this function here. Connection successful. All right, so we know that we're talking. Now, once you have your input device communicating properly, you can add tags using this uh, functionality on the right-hand menu here. So to create a new tag, you'd click this button. I already have mine created here, which is called MQTT Pressure KPA. And I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the name of the tag on the device bridge side. And here is the topic that I'm looking at in the broker. It's called pressure underscore KPA. And then I've set the data type to be a real value. Um, once you have your tags configured and set up, you can check that they're reading correctly using this tag monitoring function here at the bottom. So I'm going to select the tags I want to monitor, drag it in, and you can see the value updating here of MQTT pressure KPA. So very straightforward to get a connection and tags into your core. Um, very quickly, I'll, I'll run through some of the other notable input devices that there are communication drivers for uh, by default. So we have Allen Bradley, Compact and Micrologix, Beckoff TwinCat. We have Modbus communication protocols here, OPC UA, and MQTT, as well as many others. And there are more being added. So next, we'll take a look at the collector configuration. Collectors in DeviceBridge are used to read data from your input devices and then transform it in the core. So we have a number of default collector templates here. But I'll be using the generic dynamic collector, which is a time-based collector. So you have a few configuration options here. You can set a name for your collector, a description, and a collection interval. So this is the the frequency at which you're reading from your input devices, and then a timestamp format. So I'll go ahead and, and open up the collector I already have set up here, which is my kilopascals to PSI conversion collector. So if I edit here, you can see I'm going to collect from my input every 3,000 milliseconds. Um, under business rule is where you can configure logic for uh, manipulating the data um, within your collector. So here I read in my pressure in kilopascals and set it to this internal variable that I'm going to manipulate and work with. Um, and then I set uh, my pressure in PSI to my pressure in kilopascals times the conversion factor. 
Then I write my output value, MQTT pressure in PSI, to the internal variable value here, pressure PSI, and then save this result. There's lots of other uh, blocks here to work with as well. Under dynamic endpoint is where you set up your tags that you're going to be using. So if you'd like to add a tag that exists on an input device, you'll click this auto generate endpoint button here. Um, and then you can select your existing tag. If you'd like to create just an internal variable to work with, you'll just create it here without selecting the auto generate. That's one. And then you can set it to test, whatever you'd like. And then that will be available to work with in your business rule section. I'm going to touch on two other pieces of device bridge here that apply to the data transformation and formatting portion of the app. And those are uh, converters and data models. So a converter is used to perform some simple operation um, on your input data before it is output. So this is very similar to what I did in the collector demo here using the Google Blockly logic. Um, but using a converter, I could write a simple expression such as I want to multiply my input value by the conversion factor to convert kilopascals to PSI. And then I can apply that in a collector. So I've created a converter test collector here. And instead of implementing the conversion in the business rule section, I simply map my tag. So I'll create a new tag here and I'll map it to my converter. So here's my input tag and there you go. So this is just another option um, for manipulating data. The second piece is the data model. So data models are used for formatting your data from your input to your output. So here I have just a very simple demonstration. I'm not doing any of this in my MQTT example here, but just to kind of show you the concept, here's a JSON text file here where I'm mapping some output value to some input value. So this would be a tag name used in DeviceBridge. And you can use this to, to format your output data structure. The last piece to get this working here is to define a route, that is establish which input devices you want to read from and to where your output data should be sent. So we'll get there using the routing menu on the left-hand side here. I'll click this plus to add a new route. So then I'm going to select a collector. So we have our KPA to PSI collector that we already defined on this menu. We'll call this route just demo route, and it is going to convert KPA to PSI. And then finally, we'll select our connectors. That is our output. And that will be to the Raspberry Pi Mosquito Broker. I'm not going to use a data model here because we're just publishing to a single topic here. So I'll add that and then save. And there you have it. Our route is defined. Next step here is to create a service container. So in order to do that, we will come to the service container tab here. Service containers are used to actually run routes on the core. So to create a new service container, I will click this plus button here. And these can consist of one or more routes if you'd like. So in our example today, we'll use this single demo route. And in order to add them, you just drag and drop them here. And then I will give it a name, demo service, and uh, description is just demo. And I'll hit save, and there we have our newly created demo service container. And finally, to get this actually running on the core, we'll come down to the publish menu here. And this will open up the publish wizard. We can use all the default options here for this demo. And 
and then it will publish our demo service service container. And then we can come down to the service monitoring tab and we can see our existing services that are running. So to prove this is working, I'll show you in node red here. So what I'm doing here is sending a random pressure in kilopascals and publishing it to my MQTT broker running on my Raspberry Pi under one topic name. Then I'm also subscribing to the uh, PSI pressure and PSI topic that is published to from DeviceBridge after the conversion. So then this is the data that is read out here. So we can see every three seconds I should get a value. So you'll see my pressure in PSI and my pressure in KPA. Uh, 